Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Our today's topic is perfection of God. Perfection is a whole through and through along the gut wall. Trauma, ischemia, or tissue ulceration may cause perfection. Sometimes medical interventions contribute to perforation. So common sites perforation are stomach, ileum, the appendix, and colon. Perforation leads to leakage of luminal contents, initially local and gradually general peritonitis leads to severe abdominal pain. The leakage of intestinal contents into the peritoneum are air, feces, and high concentration of organisms. Then how important is perforation in medical context? Even with maximum treatment effort, gastric perforation leads to death as high as 50%. And it is a disaster and disability requiring hospital stay and at least limited morbidity. What are the clinical features we should go through as sudden, severe abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, fever, chills, and swelling and blotting of abdomen. These are the common clinical features. The signs of operation are silent abdomen, absolute constipation, report like rigidity of abdomen, fever and features of shock. Type of pain in intestinal perforation is going to guide us to decide the etiology of the sudden severe abdominal pain. The intestinal perforation in this case, pain starts at the site of perforation and spreads across the abdomen. Pain is intensified by movement, respiration, nausea, and vomiting. Pain in the stomach and in small bowel, the onset is sudden and pain from large bowel perforation, the onset is more gradual, and characteristically the pain is usually constant. The other clinical features are chill, rigor, nausea and vomiting and other like fever, those are from hypovolemia, pain and infection. The investigations required are X-ray abdomen in erect posture, CT scan of abdomen, ultrasonogram of abdomen, and MRI can also be done in confusing cases. And what about uh, the modalities we have discussed? The superiority CT scan abdomen. Though there is absolute preference of CT abdomen over X-ray and ultrasonogram of abdomen, the commonly asked investigation in acute abdomen is X-ray abdomen, of course, in inert posture. But CT is superior in many, in any state of acute abdomen, anywhere. But the limitations we used to face are expert in the emergency medicine field. We have limitations in such field. The online reporting may lead to increased false positive and false negative opinions. The higher expense in our current economic context, sometimes delayed reporting system running around. What are the common extra findings? What are the common extra findings? Because you juniors and those the viewers, my students, they will run in the Upochela hospitals and the peripheral uh, scenario they will face all alone with only the extra plate with them. 
So the extra findings you must know very well. Nobody else about uh, ex about uh, extra plate, and your patient is with you. Uh, a helpless scenario is in the peripheral hospitals and uh, clinics. So before going to extreme of perforation, we need to go through a normal extreme abdomen. This is normal, as I um, want to explain that this is a normal extra abdomen because uh, first there is no air fluid levels, no normal ratio of egg shadow, or there is no free air, air here. So whenever we go through an extra abdomen, we must exclude that no, there is no free air under hemidiaphragms. There is no abnormal calcification and there is no abnormal air fluid levels. And uh, the fat planes here running on the lateral abdominal wall, they are well maintained. Uh, designating as the scaffold state of normal abdominal contour. So these are the common things we have to go through. And the other normal parts I like to mention that they are, this is the hepatic shed, you know. It has a large mass producing in the right atrium shadow is running here, uh, triangular shadow running towards the midline and to the left. This is really part of first part duodenum and uh, the very little content of air in the small gut, you know the center of the abdomen is containing the small gut loops. Those have got very limited air content, mostly fluids are running in the small gut. Whenever the fluid content is less and the air content is more in small, it's raised expansion of the small gut abnormality. So the non-visualization of the center abdomen without any small gut shadow is basically normal small gut in sense of an extra abdomen. And what about the large gut? If we know the periphery of the abdomen is containing large gut. Large gut is identified by air mixed with fecal matter. Mind it, air mixed with fecal matter. The fecal matters are soft topacity, soft tissue-like opacities and is containing air within this classical uh, presentation is for the large gut, normal large gut. So the, here we can see the large gut uh, to be started here because there are some air, some fecal material. We know the cecum is a very large reservoir of the large gut of uh, fecal matter. So uh, the air is uh, not to be in here. So the right ileal fossa has got a large fecal matter content of the cecum. The ascending colon is partly defined as running with the air mixed with fecal matter. This is right polyflexure running to this way, not seen well in this extra, but um, sometimes the about the gut shadow the non-visualization is normal but in cases of uh, extra chest the non-visualization is really a pathology or minded that non-visualized gut are uh, really uh, normal gut loops inshallah if uh, there is uh, no other possibility so we can describe this as normal. The another thing I must mention that here is the psoas shadow, you know, 
it has got importance in so many fields of surgical emergency, inflammatory disorders. Uh, these SOAS shadows are seen clearly here. And whenever you go through a, an, an extra abdomen, you try to find out that yes, uh, with all those things, we can see the SOAS shadows clear. Not always clear, clear, that the 10% cases of the SOAS shadow on the right can not be visualized even in normal personal, but you must go through. If you go through, you will be satisfied that there is really um, your posterior abdominal wall and the paraspinal areas are, are really normal. So let's move. Next slide. Uh, the abdomen normal is uh, what is said. The magic box has got mostly soft tissue components and whatever part we should hear. This is an extra chest erect posture. Before going to an erect posture, I just want to mention some clinical talks about, uh, if I don't forget, I just want to mention that um, in acute abdomen, this is really sometimes or most of the time not at all possible to stand up. So I can just switch to another slide, just one thing. I want to mention that we must go for some new molecules like X-ray uh, abdomen erect posture, even it defines at up to one ml of free air is detected in X-ray abdomen erect posture. So this is a very nice investigation. You can go through to have a disastrous decision. And what about the other thing is you need 10 minutes to remain in position for the patient to settle the air upward under the hemitaphragm. So this is a thing very important you need to mention that the patient is to stay erect for 10 minutes, not less than 10 minutes, to have even a one ml free air in the peritoneal cavity. This is two crucial things you must remain in your mind. But what happens? The acute abdomen patients presenting with senior abdominal pain, mostly they are unable to stand up. 10 minutes is very late thing, very far thing, I should say. They are basically mostly unable to stand up. So whatever you learn from the classical perforation extra plate, like uh, present air under the hemidiaphragm, you will get in little percentage perforation patient in such a finding. What are you going to find really? The, there will be technical fault both from the patient's corner and from the technologist that patient is unable to stand up or cannot return on the same position for 10 minutes. And what about the technologist? Sometimes the untrained people used to take the extreme. Basically, we use the extra abdominal posture, but we necessarily need extra chest PA view. Here, the extra plate is seen here is an extra chest view in erect posture. So uh, the classical impression in our mind is free crescent air under the hemidiaphragms. Here we see, yes, there is a crescent air seen outside the dense hepatic shadow here and the faint fluid, air fluid level here we can see, and this is the air present really seen on the right hemidiaphragm. What about here? Yes, 
this is gastric fundus this is uh, left polyp flexure and the air present is here seen in between the gastric fundus and the left polyp flexure so uh, even it is written in the book that only 40 percent patients will not have who will get 60 percent perforation to have this classical picture but another 40 percent will not present with this classical crescent here under the hemi diaphragms and the books are definitely written about uh, the there is no uh, technical fault only the standards are displayed and what about our country i think the percentage of missed perforation and the absence of the air under the heavy diaphragms the rate will be much more higher than stated in the texts so this is very nice to see and memorize that there is crescent air under the heavy diaphragms but you must mind it that you are going to not less than 40 to 50 percent to be missed in extra abdomen erect posture what about the ultrasound findings or really do you need to go for an ultrasound uh, do you need to go for ct we must have a practical understanding about uh, the investigations we used to write down because the devastating outcome of the perforation we came to know that only the gastric perforation gives rise to 50 percent depth even with maximum uh, treatment effort so we don't have any scope to avoid the clinical scenario of perforation to be declared very nicely. You must be very serious about acute abdomen that you are not going to miss any perforation at all. I think uh, you must have a confidence, you must build up yourself that uh, we should not miss the perforation because if we miss it, the 50% death will, not only 50% is written in text, in our context, I think it may rise to very high, very, very high, that we are going to lose the patient really. So we should be very careful, very sophisticated to declare, to decide about the perforation part. We should not ignore about any acute abdomen uh, to declare and to leave the patient undecided with a case of perforation. What about ultrasound? What, why are we talking about ultrasound? We have said about the X-ray. Yes, we can do X-ray at any place, anywhere in Bangladesh. Patient will not have any disadvantages of uh, this investigation anywhere. The patient will have this investigation anywhere. But what about ultrasound? Does it play any role to declare a perforation? Any acute abdomen will be decided to send in the X-ray and ultrasound, basically our radiology department, to be decided whether there is a perforation or not. X-ray is in our hand. Yes, we can see the plate. What about ultrasound? Uh, if, you, if I go back to the clinical features, if you don't mind, It is the silent abdomen, it is the absolute constipation, and it is the bone like utility you have got with your patient, right? You cannot miss it. You will have it very nicely, you will have it. There is no uh, doubt about it. And what are seen in the x ray? We know.
This is the ultrasonographic findings of the perforation. Uh, you can't see this is peritoneal strip. I do not. This is liver, the left lobe. I think this is not difficult to understand. Uh, this is left of liver. This is a terminal wall. And this is peritoneal strip. What is peritoneal strip? This is uh, the outside the liver. This continued variety continuing area is the hepatic capsule. Outside the hepatic capsule is the peritoneal strip. You know that the air is settling down to the non dependent areas of the cavity anyway. So, what happens with the perforation. This is non-perforated patient and this is a perforated intestinal perforated patient. What happens here? There is ARC in the anterior abdominal wall. I cannot say this is here. What I am seeing here, there is increased echogenicity of the peritoneal stream. This is this is not casting any shadow here. There is no jam here. You see there is a jam. Something else is here in between. There is nothing here. Very fine strip here. Not that much. Uh, you cannot, you don't need to mention really. But here, something else is in between the peritoneal strip and the left hepatic lobe capsule. And that is eco channel. And that is called uh, the increased Ecogenicity of the peritoneal stream. And what is happening? This increased ecogenicity is casting a comic tail shadow. You know what is comic tail shadow? We everybody know the comet. The head of the comet is large and the tail is gradually getting smaller and smaller. So there is the head and the shadow is not that much strong but the acoustic shadow is getting smaller gradually. So the increasing echogenicity of the peritoneal strip associated with comet tail acoustic shadow is presence of free air in the peritoneal cavity. Then one thing I want to mention that the abdomen is really harboring a lot of air within the within the intestinal loops. You know everywhere in the stomach, <clears throat> the arm, large gut, partially in the small gut. So there is no deficiency of air within parts. Those air retained in the normal abdominal intestinal loops are contained within the viscera. So those are organic airs within the organs. And this is a free air. There is nothing normal air containing structure to be interposed between the left lobe liver and anterior abdominal wall. You know, there is a capsule containing the liver and it is in contact with the hemidiaphragm all around and it is moving with the hemidiaphragm and there is no in-between structure, liver and parietal peritoneum. So this is not really an organic air, this is a free air and including you are having the patient and your clinical history alone, there is really will be no doubt about your declaration, inshallah. And what are the other ends we get? The gut loops are air stomatic, ecogenic, and the free fluid is seen with mobile internal eco that are on. It is described in total in written text that there is increased because seen on the peritoneal strip 
with the reflection artifact or what I said, the commentation about amount of free fluids depending on extent of fluid spill seen in all dependent parts of the abdominal cavity like paracolic catheters, both the eyebrow closely and Morrison's pouch. Yes, the important one thing I should not there is general uh, peristalsis. Again, I just want to go back that I should go back to the clinical pictures. It is silent at all. And it is absolute constipation. And what do you really understand with the silent abdomen? Because the abdomen has a borrower continued, try to find out the intestinal motility with the sound of borrower continuously. Uh, you must uh, learn how to listen borrower uh, with the stethoscope, and you must know the this. What happens with the perforation? The abdomen gets silent. Why it gets silent? Because there is spillage of the chemicals into the abdomen, gets chemical peritonitis, even inflammation with the uh, inflammation with the infective organisms, all together gives rise to. There is paresis of the local nervous supply to the gut loops. So there is limited paralysis of the mind and the sensory flexures together, and the abdomen gets flabby without any peristalsis. That is what we say it is silent abdomen. There is no sound. No sound at all. And what about absolute constipation? The sequence of the silent abdomen and abdominal paresis, intestinal paresis, gives rise to absolute constipation. And you know what is absolute constipation? There is no expulsion of feces. And there is no expulsion of any. Yeah, so the patients get absolute constipation. If patient has got intestinal paresis, has got silent abdomen, and has got absolute constipation from the clinical history, what we will have in the ultrasound The spilled fluid in the abdominal cavity, right? That is very simple. You get it, must get it, no doubt about it. And all the dependent areas, and you will have it like the idea of the the Morrison's pouch, the paracolic cutter, extent and amount and location of the perforation will produce the scenario accordingly. And the general atherosclerosis, you will have that. Borborygmy is produced by the small gut mortality, not from the large gut. And that is what is important that when you will see to the ultrasound, you should not find out peristalsis in the large gut anytime. You will get a peristaltic large gut mostly if there is no active peristalsis at that time. So we'll have the large gut to be peristaltic. If the stomach is empty, you will not get any peristalsis there. The peristalsis you will have in the small gut, right? So if you hear borborygmy with the stethoscope, you, you must see it by the ultrasound, right? Do you have any confusion? I don't think that you are going to have any confusion now. The thing you can hear with the ear, you will not be able to see with the eyes. This is not at all right, okay? 
get confident that he will have seat definitely and what then next he gets the biological small effusion gathers with time because of the peritonitis generalized gets the limited movement of the heavy diaphragm because of the pain and gets the bilateral effusion uh, to be developed okay Numericals I have said before. And the thing I stated before that most of the time we will lose our efficiency to have a free air under heavy diaphragm because the disability from the patient side and the technical faults in the situation and scenario by the technologist also. What we generally should get and what I should concentrate next on for the another 40 or above 40 patients will not produce the heavy diaphragm showing the crescent under it as per person. So in our text in Bangladesh, we should say that this percentage patient having perforation may be missed by 50 percent or more maybe if anybody has got any data can help me so we mostly used to get an extra abdomen on live position so extra not indirect mostly we used to get uh, epiphyll, not a few, we get an X-ray abdomen epiphyll that is very soothing for the patient. So what we will get the So what we will get the free air, the neck is to uh, identify free air in it. It's a abdomen in AP film. How can we have an extra AP film with the clear presence of air in the AP film? Yeah, 
So the thing is, we have to learn to declare the presence of free air in AP form. That is the main issue of this class that uh, mostly the acute abdomen patients are advised to have a plain extra abdomen AP form. <laughs> You see, what about, again, we can go back to our normal abdominal skyogram. You see, this uh, gut loops have got air within. Just gas droplets are scattered within the loop, within the loop. But what about the outside? We don't know. There is outside strips of soft tissues. Soft tissues are our soft tissue densities, not the soft tissue. We should say that soft tissue densities are outlining the enteric gaseous shadows. Uh, so the walls outside the gas containing intestinal loops are not at all seen. This is normal. So the normal intestinal loops are not seen along outside. Outside is not outlined. What about the extra abdomen uh, epifilm having perforation? You see, this is a gut loop here, another gut loop here another cut look here but you can see the outer wall very thinly outlined so that something else is here giving creating the space air space to be outlined the outer side of the intestinal loops seem to be here there is air crescent outlining the outside layer of the gas. I don't expect for a normal intestinal loops to be outlined outside, but I can see this intestinal loop very clearly because the air is outlining the outer layers. Same would be like here and here. Uh, whenever we can see the outer walls of the intestinal loops, then you must uh, agree with me that there is a large free air outlining the whole uh, abdominal upper aspect outlining both hemidaphrums. So this is called a regular sign. So this is uh, all about today, the perforation. And we are going to close our lecture session about perforation. If anybody wants to know something about perforation, can text me. Okay, thank you very much.